Welcome, everybody. This is the U.S. Grace Force Podcast. I'm Doug Berry, along with my always amazing and very good friend, Father Richard Heilman. And tonight we got Father Carlos Martins back with us, going to be talking about, now this is an interesting title, Satan, is is he the fifth evangelist? This is uh, this should get some heads turned and get some uh, questions rolling around inside the brain to figure this one out, so looking forward to that. Of course, everything's got to begin with prayer. Father Heilman, your sure. department, my friend. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Awesome. Excellent. Thank you very much, Father. And of course, we thank everybody out there who supports the U.S. Grace Force podcast. You are in our prayers all the time. It means everything to us. Your prayers, your comments, your encouragements. I just got back from a men's conference in Lansing, Michigan, and had great compliments up there. Thanks be to God from people who have been supporting, following, and encouraging this podcast. And it's mainly because we just want to get this information out that really helps shake people up, wake people up, and by the grace of God, reach as many hearts, souls, and lives as possible. Your prayers help with that. And for those of you who support us through the Patreon program, we thank you very much as well. If anybody's interested in helping us financially, I would say a few dollars every month from a lot of people actually goes a very long way and allows us to reach many, many, many more lives and more souls with messages, especially like this one tonight. So if you're if you're thinking about helping us financially, God bless you. We appreciate it very much. Also, I've got to give a shout out to a gentleman who sent me this amazing hat. George sent this to me. This is a new Ireland hat. I'm going to be interchanging this with the other Ireland hat that I have. George, I really appreciate it. I got it in the mail. Your letter was wonderful. Uh, George has been following the Grace Force podcast since the first episode. He said four and a half years ago, he says he likes to listen to it while he's out walking his dog. That means a lot to us. It is really nice to hear that. And so, George, thank you so much for the hat, and thank you for your support and for uh, just being a faithful follower of the Grace Force podcast. That That's part of the family, in other words, when you do that. Also, don't forget to go out if anybody's interested in supporting us through our official U.S. Grace Force gear page. T-shirts, sweatshirts, all kinds of great items out there that help evangelize, and that also helps support the work that we do. So go check that out. The Of course, information is in the link. Uh, you'll find a link, um, forgive me, in the information below, rather. Okay. Uh, Father Heilman, this is great. Um, and Father Carlos, I know having you on, uh, this is a title that should wake up a lot of people. Uh, so I'm excited to hear about this because this is kind of an eye-opening sort of thing. So Father Heilman, I'm glad you were able to to uh, pull him up from the bullpen. Yeah. So Father Carlos, thanks so much for being on the Grace Force. And you've sure. got an exciting new season coming. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. That is correct. Yeah, and so we want to talk about that right up the front. And uh, also, too, I thought it would be good if we just play a short clip uh, that talk, that that shows about the new season. So let's do that first. You know, people are fixed on the devil's power. They're fixed on what he can do. And they ask me, what have you seen? Have you seen levitation? Have you been hit with objects flying through the air? And I'll say, yeah, I've seen all of these things. But you know what? They're not the scary stuff. When you see a chair levitate for the 83rd time, it gets old. But confronting the mind of the devil, the source of every perversion, every sin, every wickedness, every bad thing, That's scary. So it's going to be amazing. And thank you again for being with us, Father Carlos. So uh, if you could help us to understand the, well, first of all, it's uh, the, the Exorcist Files. It's at exorcistfiles.com. TV. Um, and if you can help us understand what it's all about, how it's doing, what you're looking forward to in the coming season. Sure. Yeah. So, so the exorcist files is the podcast that I started with my co-host Ryan Bethay last year. 
And, you know, I never imagined the kind of success that it would have. I mean, I knew that it wouldn't be ignored uh, because when you put out good teaching and everything I, I, I do, I, I put everything I've got into it. And so the, the teaching is, the Catholic teaching is, is, is worth something in my opinion. And, uh, but I never imagined the success that it got. So we, we have had 8 million downloads of that podcast. Wow. Uh, it was on the charts for over 40 weeks last year. Wow. And what's significant about that is we only produce 17 episodes. Uh, so there wasn't one per week, uh, but it's being downloaded constantly. And every day there are 15,000 new subscribers that, that get that podcast. So in, in, in light of the title of this episode of the grace force, you know, is the devil, the fifth evangelist? Well, that was exactly my strategy. Mm. You know, if I were to produce lectures on, you know, Jesus Christ as savior or, or zero in on one of the way, one of the four evangelists, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John talk about Jesus Christ and, and how they promote him or, and what is unique about each gospel I would get the same people tuning in people already that are faith filled and, and already are among the saved, if you will. But what I wanted to reach out to and, and grab was people that, that are unchurched and, and people that are not part of the flock already. And specifically, I wanted to reach out to young people, you know, 18 to 29 year olds, because that segment in the church, we, we are bleeding out of that segment horrifically mm -hmm. and you know how the the podcast came about was i saw some statistics that were put out that were just positively alarming uh so pew did a survey and they divided up the population into age segments and the the segment that was 18 to 29 year olds 18 to 29 years old they discovered that within just a five-year period the number of that segment of young adults that abandoned religion altogether and embraced nothingism increased by one third in wow. five years. Now, if that's not scary, this is I don't the know past what five is. years. The past five years. Five years. Five years. Wow. At the same time, however, a separate survey discovered that. In the same segment, 18 to 29 year olds, 63% of them believe it is possible to become demonically possessed. Hmm. So in that demographic that is increasingly abandoning religion, something is occurring in their lives that is convincing them the devil is real and they have no Christian understanding with which to parse all of that. Now that's scary. So I thought, you know, somebody has got to do something to reach out to that segment. So I, I thought I'm going to launch a podcast series. And the, the medium I chose was podcasting because that demographic is very comfortable with that format. And so, uh, you know, I, I knew that it wouldn't be ignored outright but I never imagined this success. So I, I am getting in testimonies constantly about the effect that this has had on folks, specifically young folks. And, you know, the, the proof is in the pudding. Like it, it became, uh, it was podcast of the year in religion and spirituality uh, on, on Spotify, which is the, the platform that most of this demographic, 18 to 29 year olds subscribe to. Yeah, Father, I'm curious when you when you find that they're they're departing from the faith, they're becoming basically. I think the term is what nuns, and they say, you know, what do you identify with? What religion? They say nuns, meaning nothing. They have nothing. They have none in their life. Yeah. Um, are there particular reasons or things that are happening that are that you find that are causing them to abandon faith and move into nothing? Are they disillusioned? Are they are they um, are they just uh, exhausted, tired, confused? What do you think is uh, is drawing so many of them out of faith into this nothingness? Yeah, well, you know, they're 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 never being exposed to Jesus Christ and the truth of the faith, the beauty of the faith, 
I, you know, even if they're put within a parochial school, that is a religious school. You know, many of our religious schools, the, the kids come away from that without the experience of prayer, without ever having an experience of the divine. So they might be given catechism class, but there's no experience of God behind that. Right. And, you know, if, if somebody doesn't have an experience of God, how can we ever expect them to believe in God? Right. Yeah. And, and that's it. And that giving people an experience of God, that, that in itself is, is an art form. But it's an art form that Christians ought to specialize in, especially right. teachers, mm -hmm. especially priests, clergy of, 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 of the faith. Right. So, and, but obviously, like this, this is not happening. And in that age segment, like if we don't do something to intervene now, then that age segment is lost. And they're the ones that are going to be making decisions down the road. Yeah. Uh, they're the ones that are going to be not populating our churches. And they're not going to spread the faith onto their children at all because they don't have any faith. And so things like church closures are only going to increase. Parochial schools, uh, their closures are only going to increase. And we are going to increasingly become a minority in society and increasingly be ignored. And so you're going to have a situation where the parents or at least the grandparents of certain people who were absolutely and incredibly devout, their grandchildren are, are, are going to be the enemies of the faith because it's going to be outside of their realm of understanding. It's not going to be meaningful at all in any regard to them. Father, can I get your opinion on this? And uh, this is where I'm at. I just had a conversation earlier today with a very good friend of mine on this very topic. And you said it, we're not exposing them to the divine. I mean, you could probably sum it up right there. That's where I'm at right now. And in, in, in my belief in the place that we are right now. And, and, and just get, I'll get your opinion on this. But um, I believe that as a spiritual leader uh, in this church of ours, that my primary vocation is to predispose souls, help them be prepared to e experience the divine in their life. And, and so I want, to the best of my ability, to offer the most reverent Mass. I mean, I feel like I would hip be a hypocrite, or, I, or I'd have no belief if I'm offering the Mass in some kind of flippant and nonchalant and superficial way. But to, but to offer it in, in the most sacred way possible. And I believe, Father, too, that um, what the devil did over these 50 years, plus years, whatever it is, is everything within his power to stop us from predisposing souls to say yes to the supernatural power of God, to the divine life. And, and you can go a lot of places with that. The architecture art music um the the way we offer the mass uh, um the the invention of, of human um community in the hands uh, uh everything uh you look at a typical parish and just the attire you know that the, the a lot of times you'll see the worst recreational clothes and then you see a lot of souls coming for communion and just grabbing our lord like like it's a, a potato chip and uh, and I just feel like that's the place we are right now. And so I think we've been remiss as spiritual leaders in not giving our best effort to predispose souls to to say yes to the supernatural power of God. Because I think you, I, I know you agree with this, but that's part of the equation. You know, God's offering is laid it right right in front of us, the divine life, but we have to say yes. And we have to open up the door of our soul and say, come on in. And, and I just think we've done a terrible job over these years. And I can see, you know, you're, we're calling this show, uh, is Satan the Fifth Evangelist? You're using the sense of the supernatural. And you're pointing to the reality of, yes, there's such a thing as a Satan. It's just like there's such a thing as God. Okay. And I think that is uh, helping people to um to to comprehend and be open to such things as the supernatural life the spiritual life 
that that uh, that is deeper than this ordinary life of ours. So I don't know. I can I get your opinion on that? That I, I think that's he took away our armor is the way I've been putting it. Put on the uh, put on the full armor of God so you can stand against the tactics of the devil. It says in Ephesians six. You know, um, be strong in the Lord in His mighty power. Put on the armor of God. And I, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but the armor of God is supernatural grace. You know, when we have that, we stand against the tactics of the devil. He can't get in, and we're on to him. I've always noticed, too, that with, with everything that's gone on, and you said five years, too. That's so interesting. That's 2019. I mean, that's when I've been pointing to, too, when everything just kind of exploded. Um, but... Uh, can I get your opinion on that? I, is that what's going on, Father, that that we have been remiss in predisposing souls to say yes to the divine life? Right. Yeah. So, so you know, the loss of the sense of the supernatural yes. has been to a greater or lesser degree happening since, oh heavens, since the 1950s. It even predates the Second Vatican Council because with the dawn of tremendous success within, you know, with technological advances, then there was a competing God that came through. And that competing God is science, is techno technology. And, and, and let's, let's even forget about those two terms, but human achievement and human understanding as, as we define it, you know, our, our own success at discovering the laws of physical reality. Okay, fine. We're, we've become pretty good at that. We, we were able to put a man on the moon. We're, we're able to knock out certain cancers and diseases that, that we never thought would be possible to do. Okay, praise God. We're able to do that. That still doesn't answer the question of what is the meaning of life? That still doesn't answer the question of, well, how is it that the human animal can be so depraved if unchecked? but exercise such incredible virtue if exposed to things that we normally call divine. Right. And there you have it, right? There you have it. Yep. So we try to, to, you know, human beings come upon the world and there's no innate instruction manual within them. And, and there's no kind of set of instructions that come in with, you know, Hey, this is what I'm supposed to do. This is what, for what the purpose for which I was created. However, we do find ourselves with appetites and needs and with a propensity to be disposed to things like truth, goodness, beauty, and, and, and unity. And only one thing in, in our reality is the, is the consummation of those. And that is Jesus Christ incarnate in the flesh who has offered us his love in a free love. And for those folks who have subscribed to that, just look at them go, right? Every single hospital in, in, you know, since the Middle Ages has a Christian founding. I mean, late, yeah, we've had lately in the past hundred years, some Jewish hospitals found. Have you ever seen a Muslim hospital, a Hindu hospital? Have you seen a Hindu soup kitchen? Have, have you seen uh, Buddhists having a clothing drive? in the winter. Hmm. No, the, these are Judeo-Christian concepts, the, the awareness and, and specifically Christian, right? I mean, I, I taught at a, at a university, I was a chaplain at a university and you know, the, the Jewish uh, club, the Jewish society, they had a clothing drive in the winter for Jewish students. The Muslims had an immense one for Muslims, but if you weren't a Muslim, you know, you know, go visit your own. Well, we had one and we offended anybody. We didn't ask you what you were. We didn't ask your religion. We didn't ask your party affiliation. We didn't ask your politics. If you're a person in need, no problem. And, and you weren't obligated to give us anything, not your time, not anything. You were invited to be part of us. You were invited. We had, we had things that, that we had going on for you that you were invited to. But that was not a precondition of us being charitable and generous towards you. Mm. So this is a uniquely Christian thing. And, you know, 
But our job as Christians is not just to be do-gooders in a material sense, as positive as, as, as that is. We, also, we are people of the word, not just people of the work. So we point people to the way to happiness, to Jesus Christ, the incarnate word. He animates us. And we are what we are, not just because you have a need, but because we have discovered the meaning of life. We have discovered the God who is on our side, who has incarnated himself in time and taken on flesh and spoke to us of, of the innate dignity that you and I possess. And because we have that awareness of that dignity that you and I possess, we know the dignity that, that someone who doesn't belong to the fold possesses, and we work to bring them into the fold. We work to be Jesus Christ to them. And that has made all the difference in the world. You know, take a look at the countries, for example, where Christianity has not really ever touched. Take a look at the at nations where, you know, I'm thinking of Saudi Arabia, I'm thinking of, of North Korea, uh, you know, criminal in our society, right, within a Christian society, within America, within Europe, has more rights than one of the citizens has in those nations. Mm. And that's all because of the awareness of the human dignity that the Christian faith has given us. Right? We have an awareness of that, that every human person was created in the image of God. And even if that person is not aware of that innate dignity, we are aware because it has been revealed. And so that has made for us all the difference in the world in terms of outreach and charity to those who do not know Jesus and don't know their own identity as a result of it. And everything you just uh, explained, Father, and everything you just described really does speak to the, to the comment that you made earlier about experiencing God, experiencing Jesus. I mean, reaching out for people, like you said, food drives and clothing drives and so forth, the, the works of mercy you know, corporal and, and spiritual works of mercy that, that, that the Catholic faith has always been about, that Judeo-Christian values have always been about, um, are ways to experience Christ and really get that experience out to other people. And and you're right, that's it's it's uh, it's something that we're just, we're, it just runs through the blood of a Christian. It's supposed to, um, that that's what we do, and that's how we help share that experience. Um, now, with the Exorcist Files, um, can you talk a little bit about what your feedback has been with the Exorcist Files? Because obviously, when we're not sharing that Christian experience, we're not exposed to that, we don't have that experience, that moment with God, it can allow us to be steered away into more dangerous waters, so to speak. And I know you as an exorcist, that's something that you you deal with, that's in your wheelhouse, people who have fallen into those areas. Exorcist Files is a powerful way to help get that message out. What are you hearing back about the Exorcist Files and, and where is that sitting right now? Yeah, so... You know, I, I've gotten a feedback that, I, again, I knew the podcast wouldn't be ignored. Uh, I, I knew that it would have some listeners. I, I never imagined it would have the breadth that it has. So right now I'm on a, a current tour with uh, the major relics of St. Jude the Apostle. And every city that I visit, I have people coming up to me and saying, Father, you know, thank you very much. You know, six months ago, a year ago, eight months ago, I didn't practice my faith. Uh, and some of them say, you know, I, I didn't even have a, a belief, but somebody sent me a link to the podcast. And what you described in, in, in terms of the battles with Satan that you have. So in the, in the podcast, they, my podcast consists of dramatic reenactments of actual exorcism cases that I've conducted, along with my commentary as to what is happening. You know, I'm fleshing out uh, in terms of the in between the scenes of, of 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 the combat that is occurring between myself as the exorcist and and the devil. I, I flesh out, you know, why why did what just occurred happen, and what is my response to it, and that for people has fleshed out an experience whereby they have intuited God in those examples, in those case studies. And it has united the experience that they have had in life and has provided an explanation that is rational and tangible 
and allows them to make sense of their own personal experience. Mm. From that, they have then begun going to mass or reading the Bible or going back and doing something they saw their grandmother doing, like praying the rosary. You know, I've had numerous letters of people saying, you know, I, I remember my grandmother doing that. I had no idea what the rosary was, but I, I read up online what it was and how to do it. And I started to do it. And from that experience where they didn't even fully know what, and they certainly didn't have a Christian faith as they were doing it, but they just know I felt the need to do this because I saw my grandmother doing it and listening to the podcast gave me an experience that I remember experiencing when I saw her praying. And from, from this, they have encountered Almighty God. So I have, I have, I have a, a huge box of letters that people have mailed me sharing their experience. I, I had one from a woman saying, you know, I'm, I married, married a man whom I love. He was not raised with a Christian faith whatsoever. And I would, I stopped inviting him uh, to church years ago because he would never take me up on it. But every day, every Sunday, I would get the five kids in the car. And now with the older kids being the age that they are, I would have to fight them every week. Hey, if dad doesn't have to go to church, why do I have to go to church? And it was a losing battle. So I, I gave him a link to your podcast and he listened to it. And I never, he never told me that he did. And he rolled his eyes as I gave him it. But behind the scenes, he did listen to it. And then for three months, he was going to mass unbeknownst to me. Mm. Every Saturday night, he was going to mass. We would go Sunday morning. He would go to mass every Saturday night. And then he came to me all of a sudden and told me, I've enrolled myself in RCIA. I want to become a Catholic. And from now on, we're going to mass as a family every Sunday morning. That's awesome. And what do you say to that? Other than, you know, praise God. Yeah. And this is an example where we used the devil as a fifth evangelist. Because, you know, let's face it, realistically, when you talk about the devil, that has a particular sizzle that the bare bones gospel doesn't have. <laughs> and, 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 and this is where we're at today, that the devil is more convincing to many folks than Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And I thought, okay, if that's the case, then I'm going to use him as the fifth evangelist. And, and I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell the experiences to folks that I've had as an exorcist in an unapologetic manner. Like, here it is. And, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm not going to edit any of it in the sense that I'm going to show the actual struggle that, that is taking place in each case, the attack that he is exerting on the victim and the counterattack that I exert as an exorcist, bringing the, the truth of Jesus Christ into the situation. And I'm just going to let that speak for itself yes. and let people take from that whatever they will. I'm listening to you, Father, and um, I'm thinking about something I and Doug, too, I know has been calling for is a revival in the land. But I always I always add what we really need is a supernatural revival. And it goes to exactly what you're talking about here, and what. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong again, but um, what I'm what I'm seeing happening is they're getting exposed to the supernatural, and now they're starting to believe in the supernatural. Sure, um, the existence of the devil, but if you're going to believe in the devil, you're going to have to believe in God. And so, the the entrance into the divine life starts to happen when. They awaken to that. And again, um, I was telling this friend that I had that conversation with earlier, I said, you know, it's gone for, for me from frustration to now it's almost anger, uh, where look what they did. And, and Father, can I get your opinion on this too? It almost seems like in our modern time and among spiritual leaders that anybody who is advocating for the sacred is seen as some kind of enemy because you're going to divide the church if you start doing things that help people, that assist people, that predispose people to open up to the divine life in, in, in their lives. 
And we want to be united. You, well, united where? United where? In, 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 a, in a club? In a non-government organization? In a business? Uh, we need to recover the sense of the sacred. We need to reclaim sacred ground there uh, because we have been, um, uh, well, we, we've been manipulated, I think, over all mm -hmm. these years to uh, shrug off and dismiss and think as, and here we go again, you know, I think one of the greatest uh, prevalent sins of our time is pride. You know, the, the arrogance of the woke, right? You know, you talked about science and all that stuff. Great, great, uh, love science. But, you know, you can get that that kind of uh, elitist, we know better than you kind of attitude. And, and, and that's what people before science believed in you know and now we know better i don't know father i i just is is that is that where we're at right now is is people uh have to somehow some way get exposed to the supernatural yeah you know we we were created for that Right. And and people aren't being given that. And and you know, I remember talking to a priest who's God rest his soul, he's passed now. But you know, he he was kind of he he was he was ordained in the early 70s. And yeah, he was um, you know part of amazing things in the church where the like the first curcio uh I believe happened in his parish in Indianapolis and uh, they, they, they were, they were, you know, they had an immense soup kitchen. They fed outreach to the poor, but he said, you know, what we did was we eviscerated the mystery of God from everything. So mass was presented as a community meal, an exercise of the community. Well, at a certain point, it, you know, it doesn't take long for people to think, you know, I can still do good without mass. Right. If all mass is, is, is a, an encounter with people that I already know, there's no mystery within it. What, why in heaven's name do I need to go? <laughs> you know, and, and there, there's a point right there. And, and it's true. So he said, my generation was the generation that evicted the mystery out of religion. Yep. And when we did that, we jumped off the cliff. You know, and, and there it is in a nutshell. And and he lived uh, a beautiful priesthood after that. This is Father Pat McNulty. Father Pat uh, is a hero of mine. Father Pat became a priest of Madonna House. He wrote an absolutely amazing book called uh, I Live Now, Not I. Very short book. I've read it dozens of times. It's one of the absolute classics of modern mysticism done by an author who lived through chaos and who encountered God at the end of it. And, oh my gosh, it's, it's a, it's a, an amazing book. He was an amazing priest. And in a nutshell, he formulated the, the problem that many of us have encountered having gone through the post Vatican II church that eviscerated the church of all mystery. And we tried radically to to get every single thing to make rational sense to everybody well the, in, in other words to state it differently we tried to make the faith relevant we tried to make the mass relevant for people right. the mass is relevant apart from us when people encounter the mystery of mass it speaks to them even if they can't articulate it they encounter a mystery a mass celebrated reverently and with love is Jesus Christ. And that speaks for itself. It is relevant. And, and so that's what uh, Father Pat McNulty discovered. Uh, and that's what the church now as a whole is, is discovered. And this is what I've tried to do with the podcast, but thinking outside the box in a different way. Can I use the devil? to proclaim the gospel. Hmm. And that was, that was the effort that I tried to engage in. Hmm. I just bought the book, father. <laughs> well, you just bought it online. You just went out and ordered it online. As no, you talking about I, it? I want to read this. Yeah, so, I couldn't, I couldn't re recommend that book more highly. Yeah. I found awesome. it on Amazon. Boom. It's coming. 
Nice. Two-day delivery. <laughs> <laughs> so it sounds like we need a like a spiritual IV. I, I, I like to relate the idea that, you know, w- that the body's made up of like 75, 80% water. We need to be hydrated constantly. A person gets dehydrated very quickly if they're not constantly bringing some kind of fluid. I say that just as you just take a drink. Um, so we need to be hydrated constantly with God through prayer and sacraments. So is this kind of akin to the idea that we are spiritually dehydrated and we're dying and we need an IV where someone's going to come and put a needle in the arm and just give us that divine inspiration? Is that kind of what we're saying here? Because it sounds like we're all just kind of withering away in our society. And I know, Father Carlos, that a lot of people are sitting around having the same conversations that go on and you know, my home or other places with friends or family of what are we going to do? Things are just so overwhelming. You know, there's so much out there. We know there are signs in the skies and signs in the heavens and signs all around us that the times are really struggling. And it's almost as if there there's this attitude that we're going to wait for somebody to come and kind of save us. Um, we've had a guest on many times, Dan Schneider, who reminds us in the military, they would train you with the attitude that no one's coming. Okay, you need to figure this out. And what I mean right. by that is don't, don't wait for church officials or don't wait for government right. officials. God will be the one to do this, but we have to be engaged in this wholeheartedly um, in, in whatever aspect, whatever area of the foxhole battlefield that we're on. Uh, is that is that what, what you're saying then? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, so don't 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 wait for a rescue team. Become the rescue team. There you go. Oh, that's and, good. Um, you know, and, and for me, like certainly. You know, look, no, nobody, no, nobody knows what to do. And and so pray to the Lord, you know, mm. seek his counsel. When he speaks a word to you, run with it, mm. run with it. Don't wait for somebody to approve it. Run with it. You know, otherwise, if, if we waited for, you know, clearance and approval from the umpteen committees and, uh, you know, the different uh, groups in society that, that, uh, that, that are there to give us kind of approval, we, we would never get anything started. Yeah. I mean, the, the apostles were opposed by everybody. Well, and then I think if, you know, you, and then you add on top of that, you know, and Father Hallman and I, we've addressed this so many times in the podcast, especially in, in recent months, you know, the officials that are out there that, that will grill you if you do something the wrong way, uh, cancel you, you know, um, reprimand you. And, and that pressure, that, 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 that constant dissecting of your life in a way that becomes so brutally difficult makes you think, okay, well, what's the point? Why am I even going to try to do this? But I just don't think we can have that kind of an attitude. We have to still have the attitude to move forward with it, with things. And like you said, God's speaking to you. And some of it is not rocket science. Like I, I would say to people regularly when they say, well, what I know, I don't know what God wants me to do. Well, let's start with the basics. Um, you have a household. I do. You have a family. I do. Okay. We well, need to take care of the household and the family. So when the electric bill shows up, you know that God's going to want you to pay the electric bill because that's your responsibility in in those circumstances under those under those parameters at that time. So there's certain things that are obvious. Okay, spiritually speaking, is prayer in your home? Is God in your home? Does your home live for God? Do you serve God? If not, that's a given. You've got to bring God into your home. You've got to be faithful to prayer, sacraments, and so forth. Um, you know, and on top of that too, you know, Father Heilman, we we you know the podcast we did a couple weeks ago with Cardinal Burke. This novena that's out there is a call on heaven, a call on Our Lady to do this novena to Our Lady of Guadalupe. My Guadalupe Rosary. That's it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, talk about a message from heaven to make clear, <laughs> Father Carlos. Can you speak to the power of of the Rosary? Our Blessed Mother has repeatedly called on the Rosary, and as an exorcist, I mean, we've had you say this in the past and others as well that when the Blessed Mother is is called upon in any crisis, uh, spiritual crisis, um, that, that's, that's some heavy artillery against the devil. Absolutely. You know, one of my favorite anecdotes was during the apparitions to, to St. Bernadette at Lourdes from, from the River Gave, which ran alongside, uh, adjacent to the grotto, uh, that Bernadette starts, started hearing demons speaking and, and growling and, 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 speaking obscenities from from their place in the water and she said all our lady did was turn her sled turn her head in the slightest direction towards them and they screamed and ran away wow that awesome. our lady is the nuclear weapon against yep. those yes. losers 
Yep. And so, you know, for us, uh, the rosary is a powerful weapon. Uh, if you if you notice uh, on on the so on the 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 website of the podcast, which is exorcistfiles.tv, uh, we are running a Kickstarter campaign to produce the second season. To we we need some finishing funds to produce that second season. But on the video, you will notice the rosary that's used in it in that promotional video is the the combat rosary produced by the great and glorious Father Richard Heil. <laughs> Not about that, but it's yeah. the coolest rosary in the world. There it is. You know, and it remains today. It's it's the most durable, most rugged, most uh, gosh, I, I've I've never had one break on me. Uh, nice. I've used it in an exorcism. I, I've I've had it attacked, and it's it's the rosary that keeps on ticking. So. Uh, if you're looking for something that's really durable, friends, the the combat rosary is is well, is what you need. It's what Father, you want. Thank, thank you, and I do love this rosary. Uh, but I want to make sure what you're with your Kickstarter, and you need funds. You're going to get some from me too, because I love what you're doing. But uh, can we put that up, or how do we? Pe- how how can people help yeah. with? What you're doing? Yeah, it's exorcistfiles.tv, and okay. we've we've had an an amazing run, and why we're doing a Kickstarter is because the first season was sponsored by our heart media, our heart radio. And they provided, you know, to produce one episode of this podcast is over $10,000 uh, because everything is done professionally on there's professional sound engineers. Uh, there there's professional actors uh, read the parts of the relevant actors. Now I, I do narration as myself, uh, but there's an actor that plays me, during the exorcisms uh and all of that requires a it, it, it requires funds because you do that uh and so i heart paid for that for season one but you know we it, it became important for us for for myself the host and ryan my co-host to promote christian advertisers and not have advertising uh, from people, from organizations that had nothing to do with the Christian faith. Uh, we wanted su- to support Christian organizations, Christian companies. Uh, and so it became necessary for us, uh, we felt, to become independent. So we did that. And becoming independent uh, meant that we didn't have iHeartRadio bankrolling any- everything, mm. but we we needed to get funds to support the high quality engineering that we retained. And in fact, we, we, we ended up hiring more people. We ended up hiring uh, Emmy award-winning uh, people to be part of our sound engineering team. Uh, so we think season two is going to be extraordinarily good. If you liked season one, uh, season two is going to be something that is, is going to astound you. Uh, but we need, we need some funds to get through the crest of the hill uh, to launch that second season. And I'll so just say please, that we've got... Go ahead, Father Harlan. Well, I was going to say, please, please, please donate yeah. Uh, for, yeah. to help this. This is amazing what you're doing, Father. We've got to support this. We'll have a link in the description for anybody who's listening to our podcast or watching it. Um, I've got the uh, site pulled up on my other monitor here. Very easy when you go out to um, exorcistfiles.tv, exorcist files.tv you'll see donate to the show top right and right there in the center is a big click here button that will allow you to go out there and contribute a few dollars to this and yes absolutely let's get on board with this this is exactly what we need to do for those of us and i would say this you know um and you know as a layman talking with uh, two great priests here um you know i my role obviously differently is lived out than yours and I look at different things. I mean, I've been very blessed to travel around and speak, you know, all over the country and outside the country for over three decades and such. But, the, you know, that even in that, I still can't reach things that I would love to be able to reach. But the role that you are both doing as priests is critical. And in this particular unique case, Father Carlos, what you're doing with this program is phenomenally important. And so for anybody out there who ever for, for a moment has ever complained about, oh, things are so bad in the world, what can I do? This is something you can do. You go out to extrasfiles.tv, click on this, get out there, drop a few dollars or several dollars if you can into this and let's get this program out there. 
Um, again, if you can refresh our memories, Father Carlos, as to the numbers of views and the, the popularity of the first season, so that people realize the reach and the impact this has already had. What are those numbers again? Yeah, so we've had we've had over eight million downloads uh, every wow. single day. Fifteen thousand new people subscribe to the show. Wow. Uh, so these these numbers are simply staggering. We we never expected them. I never expected them. Uh, but it it goes to show that there is a hunger. Mm for the supernatural. And we package this in a way that is different than usual. These are not church lectures. And, and I'll, I'll be the first to say, it's not everybody's cup of tea, you know, to, 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 to sit there and listen to reenactments of exorcisms. Hey, if, if it's not your thing, I don't blame you. Mm. But certainly for young people, this it's working. Yeah. People are chiming in and, and it's a way in which they are giving the gospel a hear. They're lending their ear to hear about the, this battle that is happening between good and evil. And that's all we ask for because we, we are, we are trying to make it as convincing as possible. And the, the results of which uh, people are affirming that, okay, you, you have convinced me, you have packaged this in a way that is powerfully convincing of the truth. Mm. All right. This is how it is changing. I have, I have a box of letters uh, an immense box, a large box, identifying that. In fact, I haven't been able to read them all because there's just so many that come in. Yeah, yeah. Father, we're almost out of time, and I just wanted to get your opinion on this. Um, Doug and I have been talking, and I've been talking with others, but um, we do feel like this is an historical moment, and we need to move. And I guess my dream is to unite with Doug and you, and you know, other other people out there that are trusted sources so that we can uh, do all that we can uh, to help people. And, and here it is again, and I've always said I want it on my funeral card. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power put on the full arm of our God so you can stand against the tactics of the devil. St. Paul to the Ephesians chapter 6. Um, you know, how do we get strong? How do we, and, and, I, and, and I truly believe this, and we've talked about it already on this show, but the first thing is, Where's the desire to get strong? You know, I always say that, um, you know, people say, oh, you know, the problem is that we've had poor catechesis over the years. Okay, maybe, but maybe we've also had the problem that people didn't want to study the catechism yeah. over all these years. There was yeah. no drive inside them. And so I want to put my eggs in this basket. I'm, I know we've been doing it in other ways, uh, but we, we've been talking that, and I, I might even give Cardinal Burke the credit because this has just been, really formulating just in the, recently and, and and recently was, you know, him calling for this nine month novena. So I just think, I think the Holy Spirit is, you know, but by the intercession of the Blessed Mother is, uh, is really percolating here. But don't we need to unite, Father, at this time? We got to unite, don't we? You bet. We got to support each other. Yeah. You bet. You bet. We, we have so many, I mean, we have one enemy, but that enemy takes on so many different forms and we we've just got a we, we we've got a band together. You got a band together. Yeah. Yep. And and that's and a, another thing is that the devil hates uh, people who are helping others to find and enter into the divine life. I mean, you know, some of the greatest um, complaints and just uh, anger for, uh, over the years of my thirty six years of priesthood has been any time I've tried to move closer to a more sacred mass. Can you believe that? That's the great mortal sin. Hmm. You know, the, 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 and you can tell that, that the devil hates that and he hates truth, right? So speak truth, promote the supernatural, and the devil's going to incite souls. Is, is that what you're finding, Father? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. So, well, Father, I'm sorry, Father, you have one more, Doug? Yeah, I was going to say, I know we just got a couple of minutes left, and I just want one, just one quick question for the average family out there, husband, father, mother, wife, what is your simple to the point, bullet point advice when it comes to obviously support this type of work that you're doing, I think is critical. So again, encourage everybody to go out to exorcisefiles.tv, link is in the description, donate, contribute so we can get this next season completed and out there for public consumption and let's get millions more people, live souls on board and help them. But for the average home, the foxhole that I have to handle and other husbands, fathers, mothers, wives, bullet point advice, Father Carlos, what should we do? 
let your kids see your faith, live the faith, yep. you know, kiss your wife with love, yeah, hug, sure. hug, hug your husband. Like you mean it, let yep. your kids see that, yep. you know, pray before the, evidence of the Holy spirit, the fruit of the Holy Absolutely. spirit, love, joy, peace, that peace, you are peace. convinced of something bigger than yourselves yep. and you will save your family as a result yep. of that. They'll want what you have. Yeah. Right. Nice. That's well, good. that's a great place to end father. Thank you so much. And please, 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 uh, let's all participate and join in by by contributing and, uh, you know, the millions of souls that are awakening now to the divine life through this is just incredible. Praise God. Yeah. Father, could you end with a little prayer blessing? Absolutely. Yeah. May Almighty God descend upon you both, your families and, and all of your listeners and, and uh, their families and, and all those whom all of you love the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Thank, Thank you, Brother you, Carlos. Father. Absolutely. God bless you all.